channel. Um, today I'm going to be prepping something called Carduna or Cardoni or Cardoon. Different people pronounce it a little bit differently or use similar words, but um, this is what it is. This is what it looks like. It's going to look like an overgrown celery and this is actually part of the artichoke plant. So if you like artichokes, you're going to like this, but it does need some prep to it before actually making it into something else. Uh, you're going to want to trim the ends. As you can see, they're a little bit dried out and brown. And I'm also going to trim the root end of it. And then I will also be peeling back or with a knife, stringing them so that I remove all the fiber, like the heavy fiber spits from it. And of course, rinsing them really well in cool water. So I'm going to do that. The other thing that you're going to need are some lemons and I've got a large pot of water um, coming up to a boil on the stove. So this is something that is very typical around Christmas time. Um, I don't know much about northern Italy but I think it's more prevalent in southern Italy, specifically Sicily. And if you are on the hunt for this type of vegetable, I would suggest checking out either an Italian deli that might have a produce section. You can also go to places like Whole Foods if they don't have it in stock. If you ask like the produce manager, it's quite possible that they can order you a case. Um, I did not get that much because I'm not making that much, but if you order it, like a case of it, sometimes it's worth it because they'll give you a little bit of a discount. Now, you cannot go wrong with adding too much lemon. Uh, first of all, because it has a tendency to brown pretty quickly. So before I drop it into my boiling water, I'm actually prepping a bowl of cool water and that'll be to put in after I wash it. Okay. The outer stalks, I'm going to trim separately and then cut them. And then what's considered the heart, um, I'm going to prepare it a little bit differently. If also you find any brown spots, you want to cut those out um, because that is not so nice. Most of the work is in the cleaning, um, but that's just how it is. This also freezes really well after they're cooked. So if you end up finding a case or whatever, um, just know that once you cook it, you can freeze it and it can stay for a while. Once I trim the stalks clean, I'm cutting them into about one inch pieces um, until I get to the core area, I do want to have one piece that I'm basically, basically going to leave whole more or less because I'm going to use it to stuff it. When I get to the bottom, I'm trimming the root and then I'm just trimming this part around that the other pieces have been pulled off from. Um, and then I'm going to make an X as well. And this is something that is seasonal. Um, I've really only seen it around November, December, around the holidays. So, but it's really good. Um, extremely high in fiber. Just warning you now. But it's, it is very, very tasty. Now, this is towards the center core. I'm leaving a few of the more tender stalks on here, but I don't want the whole thing. Um, meaning, I don't need the whole length of this, so I'm going to trim about this much, and leave this part for stuffing it, and then the other part I'm just going to clean and trim as the rest. Another note, if you're one of those people that um, is like a no waste kitchen 
And if you're thinking that you can use the scraps of this for stock, I wouldn't. Um, I would definitely use it in the compost bin, but not, not in a veggie stock. I think it'll be a little bit too strong. So just keep that in mind. Okay, as you can see, the core, I've made an X into it, and this is so it will cook um, the center, just like the outsides. And this is pretty tight. I am going to just kind of loosen this up a little bit so that water could go in. And as you can see, there are some leaves as well. Just leave them, they're fine. Okay, so here are my cut up stalks that have been soaking in the lemon water um, and this is just while my pot of water is boiling and that is ready uh, let me show you how I prepped it so once my water started boiling I did put in a teaspoon of salt and now I've just squeezed and dropped the rest of the lemons that I'm using and I might add the other one that is in the other um, dish Okay, this is the rest of the other lemon. If you think it's too much lemon, it's not. Carduna can take it. If the seeds drop in, don't worry about it. You can fish them out later. Um, the lemon also does enhance the flavor, believe it or not. It's just a really good pairing, so don't skimp on the lemon. Um, I'm going to bring this back up to a simmer, and I'm going to let this go for probably an hour. I will check. So you're going to want to cook this until it is somewhat tender. Um, because it's nicer to eat when it's tender and it's probably going to take about an hour or so I will check on it if it's not maybe another 10-15 minutes but it's just gonna be on the stove here while I do other things around the house and then I will be showing you two different ways that you can prepare this okay so this is about after an hour and you'll basically take a knife pierce it and that's actually pretty good especially if the knife goes through the core um, that's how you'll know the rest is definitely tender but you can also pick one up you can taste it if you'd like which might do that with a smaller piece okay this is pretty hot it's like super hot It's good it's just hot <laughs> um, lemony which is great um, not salty it's just a little bit of salt in the water to give it a little boost of flavor but when I start cooking or preparing it in another way I'm gonna be adding other things to it it's actually very very good okay so I've gone ahead and drained this I'm gonna let it drain really well for a few minutes my Carduna have come to room temperature and I am just going to peel and chop some garlic. I have three pretty decent sized cloves. Um, just chop them up and I'm going to warm up some olive oil. I warm up the garlic in the olive oil. And it's basically an Italian stir fry of carduna, olive oil, garlic, a little bit of salt and pepper. And that's dish one. As far as how much garlic to use, totally up to you. I like it garlicky, so for the amount of vegetable that I have, um, it may be a lot of garlic for some people, but in this case, I really don't mind because I'm going to be the one eating it. So I've gotten one of my biggest saute pans and I want a lot of surface area. That's why I'm doing this. Uh, I started out with a cold pan, drizzled some olive oil, put my garlic in so the garlic can get heated with the olive oil and flavor the olive oil. And then as this starts to sizzle, I will be adding the carduna. Um, to this, I am going to add a little bit of salt. Not a lot, but I do want to season it. And I don't want to burn the garlic, so as you're frying these up or sauteing them, you know, move it around. And you're just looking to have the garlic cooked through. And also maybe get some color 
on the Corona. So here we have sautéed carduna with garlic, olive oil, salt and pepper. It's hot. It's simple, delicious. Um, you can add another squeeze of lemon if you'd like, but I think it's good enough. You know, some people really like that acidity, but it's not acidic from cooking with the lemon water. And if you're wondering what the texture is like when it's cooked like this, it is tender, but it still has a bit of crisp to it. So I cannot think of another vegetable that would be comparable, but if you are a foodie or just interested in trying new things, this would definitely be one to try. So how do you eat this? Um, you can eat this as is. It makes a really great side dish, um, particularly for fried foods, fish. Um, we usually have this for Christmas Eve. So a typical meal would be like fried bacala, fried cauliflower, and this. Um, this is one way that my family happens to prepare it. I know there's many different ways that it can be prepared, but this is how we like it. You can also, if you needed another idea, you can also toss this with some plain pasta, drizzle some more olive oil, maybe top it with some parsley and toasted breadcrumbs, and that's also really good. I also like it where we stuff it, so let me show you what I'm going to use. So to a bowl, I've added some regular breadcrumbs as well as panko breadcrumb, some chopped parsley, chopped garlic, some Parmesan cheese as well as some Pecorino Romano cheese, lemon zest, a pinch of salt and some pepper and I'm going to add olive oil to this to make a kind of a paste. You can do this with a fork, you can do this with your hands. So my filling is prepped. I have my Carduno ready to be stuffed. I also have another plate with some seasoned flour, another plate with um, egg yolks. I will explain. Since we are doing a pan fry on this, all of these steps are necessary. I'm going to be using some of the stuffing to fill in the stalks. And then once that is filled, I will be dredging it in flour lightly and this is just has some cracked black pepper and a tiny pinch of salt um, I have egg yolks so here's the thing I'm also baking some Christmas cookies tonight that just called for egg whites I didn't want to waste the yolks so I'm using this as my outer layer before I add more of the breadcrumb mixture on the outside for a crispy coating the other thing that's going to be helpful is kitchen twine. Um, I'm going to say three, depending on how long you might want to use an extra one, but this is going to help hold it together. <clears throat> now, you can use a spoon. I am not going to. I'm just going to kind of open this up gently and with my hands start filling this cavity and then going in between the stalks. Now, once um, you do have the filling in, you want to gently um, tie this up. It's going to be better to do this now because it'll just make your life a lot easier. So I'm doing three, one in the middle, one on each side. And then I'm just going to trim off the excess. Okay. 
And then the next step will be to just dredge it in some flour. It does not have to be like super dredged, but, and this is fine too. If you sprinkle it on top and just kind of pat it on, that works. And then, <laughs> I know it's a lot of steps, but you want to kind of coat in the egg yolk. And please feel free to get your hands messy. It's fine, you can wash them afterwards. It's really not a big deal. And I'm just gonna use this same plate to coat this. And if this hangs out at room temperature for a couple minutes, that's fine as your pan heats up. That's what I'm gonna do as I clean up a little bit. And then you'll be able to fry your Carduna. I am using the same pen as I did um, for this. I didn't bother to clean it out because I knew I would be doing the second one. So as this warms up, I will be adding just a little bit more olive oil and placing the Carduna in it. Okay, so you do want to hear it sizzle when you put it in the pan, and then you're just gonna turn it slowly as it cooks. Um, the outside with the egg will get a little bit crispy. It's not completely coated. This is not a deep fry. It is a pan fry, but um, trust me, this turns out great. So I've been turning this a little bit every couple of minutes or so. Um, I have some color on here. I will be cutting this piece probably in half, afterwards but you know for now I'm just doing it like this um, and of course the point is to have many but I only got one because I am not doing this for Christmas I'm doing something else but I really wanted a little bit this time of year so when this is done you do want to let it drain on a paper towel so it doesn't get soggy it stays somewhat crispy Awesome. Delish. So here we have both dishes side by side. Um, the one on the left is definitely more rustic, more everyday, whereas this one is more special occasion and definitely reminds me of Christmas time. So having it prepared this way um, definitely reminds me of Christmases in the past and um, it's very nostalgic. Definitely one of those things that I would look forward to having or just a reminder of what time of year it is because it, it's a special occasion thing. We don't have this this way very often. But yeah, so again, my suggestion, if you're curious to try it, I happen to find this at Bristol Farms, but... Um, I know for a fact that you can go to Whole Foods and inquire about it if they can get it for you. Try it out, order it, um, make friends with the produce guy over there. Sometimes you can find it also in uh, ethnic markets. And if you're lucky, you might have an uncle that might spot it on the side of the road and just harvest it and give it to you. <laughs> but if not, you know, there are other ways to go about it. Um, this one turned out really tender actually, so I'm very happy about that because this is my first time attempting to make it. So, but I really wanted to recreate uh, things that I've had in the past and I can't complain. It turned out really good. I just wanted to share something from my heritage that we do around the holidays and here's wishing everyone a really nice holiday season. Um, hopefully I'll post up one more video before the end of the year, but if not, I will see you all next year. And the strings, just cut them off as you eat it. No big deal. This with red wine is a match made in heaven, just to let you know. 
<clears throat> now having it this way, um, the stuffed version, we typically serve it with maybe roasted meats or a baked pasta. It's definitely the more festive of the dish. So for example, in my family, the Christmas Eve, we usually do fish, no red meat. So it's usually bacala, cauliflower, um, version one of the carduna, and maybe some salad, some bread, and it's pretty simple because most of us still work on Christmas Eve half day, you know, so we're not on vacation yet. And then Christmas Day is when we have red meat, pasta forno, which is a baked pasta. Um, we'll have this type of carduna salad. I mean, probably, I don't know, some extra vegetables, you name it. It's, you're not going to go hungry. I'll just put it to you that way. But, um, so the first one was Christmas Eve. The second one is Christmas Day. Thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a safe and happy holiday season. Um, I do hope to post up one more video by the end of the year. But in case I don't, um, please have a safe holiday and I'll see you all next year. And please remember to like, subscribe, and share with your friends about this channel. Thank you. Thank you.